Hey, I'm Brian with Black Harbor, and today we're working on side channel attacks. Check out our setup. Here we have the chip whisperer and the chip shouter set up on an Ender 3D printer, and we are scanning a microcontroller which we are trying to bypass the JTAG censorship password function. And once we get past that, we'll be able to flash custom firmware and dump the JTAG password. So what we're doing is EMFI glitching attacks. So we're using electromagnetic frequencies to inject faults on the chip. And the ender is panning around the microcontroller trying to find the best spot where glitching attacks may be successful and bypassing the password function. And the chip whisper is controlling the timing and when the software is doing the password check. And we're attempting to send the injection attack right after the final character of the password is tested. And then the next function would be the check if password is correct or incorrect function. And if the glitch is successful, we just uh, blow past the password function, even with the incorrect password, and can reprogram the chip and dump the firmware. So in addition to the EMFI glitching attacks, we're also attempting voltage glitching to get past the password check. So here we have another board where we're using e uh, a voltage glitching hardware that we made that we call the chip shorter. And right now we're probing a capacitor to send voltage at uh, 20 attempts per second to try and voltage glitch past the password check function. And if you look on our scope, you can see it's sending so fast it's hard to see, but all of these peaks are when we're tripping the voltage glitch attack. So hopefully we defeat the password check soon. So as the chip shouter is panning around the microcontroller, we're looking for the best positions in the XYZ plane where we're seeing some more probability likelihood that the uh, password function is being skipped. So we have this graph that we're using to map out where we're more and less successful. So the red dots on this graph are where the board has just crashed and hard reset. So the the board's in the uh, checking the characters of the password, and at some point, we just crash the board. So this indicates to us that we are having effect on the chip, but uh, we might need to tweak other parameters like the timing of the attack or the voltage. We're dumping anywhere between 250 and 500 volts uh, through the electromagnetic fault injection attacks. So, you know, there's a lot of different parameters you can change other than the voltage. There's uh, four different tips with different polarities that you have to change and the tip length. So a lot of test iterations before you might see success, which for us would be a green bubble that we're still looking for, meaning that we've successfully glitched past the password check and now can flash the board with our own firmware. The blue bubbles are where we're sending the characters for the password, and the board echoes back the same characters that we're sending, and when we see a blue bubble, that means it echoed a different character than the character we sent. So we're no, we know we're having some sort of success messing with the microcontroller in that sense because it's returning a character that's not the character uh, we sent. So that gives us an indication that that position on the microcontroller might be getting us closer to bypassing the password function entirely. And uh, the size of these bubbles is, for every position we're trying 20 iterations of the test, and where the bubbles are bigger we might test uh, more attempts because it seems that this position is more successful. Where there's no bubbles we're, we're not getting any response at all. The modules not seeming to have any effect in this attack. Block Harbor, building great solutions for automotive cybersecurity to keep mobility safe.